Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am Kareem Clemens. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for following me right here, right now. This right here is Kareem in the morning. Okay, guys, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, let me just go ahead and run my disclaimer before I continue to move on with my programming. This channel and these videos are not meant for children under the age of 13. Get into the disclaimer, the copyright disclaimer under the section 107, Copyright Act 1976. Okay, guys, welcome, welcome yet again. I am Kareem, and we have stories right here, right now for you guys. Uh, this is just some of the stories that I have picked right here on Kareem in the Morning, and just giving my opinion right here, right now for you guys. This is just some of the stories. I may not get to all the stories, but uh, these are just some of the stories that I've been looking at over social media and some of the stories that have been trending and uh which basically um i've shared on my broadcast program before in the past on some of these stories these are just some of the updates and some of the new stories so uh shout out to everyone who is watching shout out to those who are here shout out to those who are on their way okay so i do want to start off uh well these are just some of the things and then i'll go ahead and go into the stories. Okay, we have Coolio's death, shocking to the nation. Also, uh, there is uh, social media news about the Netflix of the Jeffrey Dahmer, which Netflix removed the LGBTQIA uh, tag from its series. Uh, we also have some information about the arrest in P and PNB, excuse me, PNB rock rapper who was shot and killed at the Chicken and Waffles in Los Angeles. We also, uh, there is also information about a suspect caught in the, in the Bishop Mid-Sermon robbery in Brooklyn, give you uh, information on that because I did cover the story right here on Omega Studio News and Talks with T. So I'm just gonna cover it right here uh, on Kareem in the morning. And then uh, there is a uh, video surfacing out there. I don't know if you guys seen it, but this is the video. And if your discretion is advised, the video may be linked in the description below. Okay. Uh, this is a video about a man, motion disturbed man, who basically just pushed an EMT on the ground and started stabbing her repeatedly so that video is on social media so the link will be in the description again your discussion is advised right here right now also too i will be giving you guys updates on the Olympic Student news talk show ttv also the talk show t youtube gaming and what's coming to the channel okay so Yes. So, yes. So let's go ahead and start off with this top story right here, right now. I know to some people it may be not breaking news, but right here on Cream in the, Cream in the Morning, we have breaking news right here, right now. Coolio. Coolio, real name, uh, artist Ivory Jr. has died. Okay. It is very shocking that yet again, a rapper has died Uncer like unexpected like you know a lot of people are saying that um he well social media is saying that he possibly may have had a heart attack uh some of them are saying that speculations may be you know that's what social media is saying and then you know we have to wait for toxicology report and then autopsy report to you know, which I don't really understand why it's the business of people, but you know, everybody wants to know because 
people like me, citizen journalists and journalists and uh, people who are doing the news and bloggers and stuff, they want to know because Coolio, as we know him, his stage name, he died at a young age, 59. That's young. And it reminds me when back in August, uh, back in April of last year, when um, DMX died, he died at 50, 50, 51. He died at a young age. So here's the story right here, right now, about the details surrounding the death of Coolio. We do know that he died at 59 years old. This is what social media is saying. Uh, on September 28, 2022, they are trying to find out how he passed away, but they are saying that um, they're saying that when let me see because I did read it here. Um, I did read about. Okay, here we go. It says here from social media network, they're saying that the cause of death has not officially been released, but they believe that he possibly may have died from a heart attack. Now, mind you, when breaking news happened when DMX died, it was like they said he went to cardiac arrest and then he was on life support and then they, he got off life support and then they mysteriously he was back on life support and then boom the world found out that dmx passed so in this case around then uh coolio's death uh they are thinking that he possibly may have had a heart attack now according to social media news they're saying that first responders answered a call at 4 p.m local time and the emergency medical Technicians found Julio unresponsive and performed resuscitation efforts for approximately 45 minutes. Now, mind you, when DMX, because it's like I'm comparing these two deaths, like I'm not saying it's suspicious, but I'm just saying like it's just unbelievable. You understand? For me, again, these are the opinions from me to you, okay, on this show. All right. So I'm just saying that I'm like, I don't know. You know, sometimes uh, it's our time to go, it's our time to go. But, you know, when after all these years, it's like, does the past catch up to you? I'm, I don't know. I'm just saying. So apparently the EM, EMS worked on him for 45 minutes and they were unsuccessful. They said that Julio was determined dead just before 5 p.m. Okay, so I don't know. I, I don't know how they jumped to the conclusion that Coolio had a heart attack. Because they did say at some point that when they went to his, his friend home, because he, he allegedly, from what I've read, and if it's maybe something different, he was at a friend's house and he was unresponsive. I don't think they found him at his house. They found him at a friend's house and he was unresponsive. But they did say that when they went there, they didn't find any drugs, drug paraphernalia, anything around him that will give up a sign that he may possibly may be dying from an overdose. Who knows? Okay. But we just don't want to hatch all those eggs because when DMX autopsy came back it was he had this that this and a third in his system previous to what we heard from reports right so we just don't know but we do know that he died at 59. so that's like the most scariest part because we do know that the life expectancy for people in the United States is, I believe, 78. But the statistics have shown that uh, that number is lower for African American individuals, which they're saying that possibly 74 could be 
a life expectancy. But and all in all, ladies and gentlemen, it's all about taking care of yourself. It's all about thinking about the longevity of your life. And if you have signs in your life that is telling you to slow down, go to the doctor, or changes in your body that you feel is abnormal, just get it checked out. Don't ignore those signs. Because according to social media, they are saying that um, it is possible that, I don't know, if they, if they said he had a heart attack, they're saying that it is possible that he may have ignored some signs. I don't know. But I'm just going to go ahead and just say people should not ignore signs or symptoms that will usually take place within days, weeks, months, leading up to what could possibly be a catastrophic event, which could lead to death, okay? I mean, there are signs when strokes come. There are signs when heart attacks come. There are signs where people will experience these ultimate life or death situations in their life. Okay, so for example, <clears throat> and I can say this on my show, I don't have no recordings of her or her courtroom or anything, but I follow Judge Stephanie Boyd, and this is not even on here, but I just want to just put this out there in archives. I follow Judge Stephanie Boyd at the 187th District Court in San Antonio, Texas. Okay, I follow her on YouTube, and I can tell you back. In April of 2022, uh, the courts was on Zoom. And Zoom, since it's open to the public, it was broadcast on YouTube. And it, right in the midst of the um, court hearing, the, the lawyer, one of the lawyers who was representing a, um, a client was talking. And as he was talking, his speech become very slur. And he was like, needy, needed, like he wasn't really like, I think he, I don't know if he was embarrassed, but it was just that he kept talking. And you could see the judge face, you could see the client face, you could see the court reporter's face, you could see everybody's face who definitely, definitely was like, okay, well, this, we don't understand. So the judge, knowing her, and I'm pretty sure she knew the signs and everything. She said, okay, well, we're going to go in a breakout room and we need him and the deputy and the court reporter and her to go into, you know, she switch over. But before she did that, oh my God, oh my God, he started talking. And then next thing you know, these are the signs. He started talking and then his speech was slur, like really slur. And then next thing you know, he, he just went down on the camera and then Judge Boyd, she knew right there. She was like, oh, my God, somebody contact EMS, um, the deputies. Like, and it's like it was really crazy because everybody was home during the time of the pandemic. So the court was, uh, you know, he was at his office. She was at her office. The jail was at the jail. The uh, court reporter was in the courtroom. So no one could really go to him physically at that time. But what we seen on that camera was... He, he, the sign was he uh, slurred speech and then he dipped down and then he dipped back and it, it's all on camera. And uh, what it looked like, what it looked like, he, it looked like he was having a medical episode, but to me, it looked like he was having a heart attack. Okay, right on live court. And he fell back and the judge was like, somebody please. And then I, I don't know if, I don't know if he survived. But I can tell you the judge, Judge Stephanie Boy, she did everything she could possibly do to get EMS over there to his residence because she was giving out the address. She uh, was on the phone. I'm telling you, it's all on archive. So you guys can go up there. But my thing, the reason why I brought that up, because I want to say Stephanie Boy, uh, Judge Stephanie Boy, she's a hero. And she, she's fierce. She's a fierce judge. And I really hope that she get reelected on the bench again. OK, so she can continue to serve the community of San Antonio. And if I was in Texas, she'll have my vote 
but I'm going to continue to support her and I want you to support her by going to YouTube and following her on the YouTube channel if you are into court hearings, okay? Judge Stephanie Boyd, just go in there, type it up, and boom, you'll see her. That wasn't on the here, but I just wanted to bring that up because the signs of heart attacks and strokes, okay, and seizures are really, really serious. So, ladies and gentlemen, we just need to really, really come into contact with those symptoms so we can get the adequate help we need. Okay, and uh, just to add on to the last story of Julio, uh, when funeral arrangements is set for the late rapper, uh, I will give you guys the information right here on Cream in the Morning or Omega Studio News or Talk Shit Do. Okay, so I want to update you guys real quick on the arrest. Now, this is a gag and a shocker, bitch. Okay. There has been a rest in PNB Rock, uh, who was shot and killed at a chicken and waffles in Los Angeles, who I just want to make a correction back then. I did say that the lady, I mean, I did say that he posted something on Instagram, but it wasn't him. It was the, the girl, uh, his girlfriend who posted something on Instagram and then added their location and then all hell broke loose. But here, this is a, this is a really crazy interesting story what i'm about to share to you right here right now okay so we do have arrests and the death of pnb rapper well pnb rock rapper who was shot and killed we are now hearing that a step oh what we're gonna say we, we're here stepmother a 17 year old and a father has been arrested on charges of murder 17? Okay, listen to the story, guys. Okay, we have now just learned that a 17-year-old in a 17-year-old and who was in custody, the father who turned himself in to police. Now, how did they know that this man was the killer? Well, I don't know. Maybe the 17 year old might have talked. Maybe stepmom may have talked. But I do know that when they did find out, because, you know, they have, well, they did say that his death was caught on surveillance at the chicken and waffle. But I want to say this, ladies and gentlemen, the surveillance tape might have caught clear actions, clear cut view outside, inside. But apparently it did something because they have an image of this man's face. So, without further ado, this is what I'm hearing on social media. They're saying that this man sent his 17-year-old boy into this chick, allegedly. See, that's Madison, the judge, highest court across the land. Okay? Allegedly sent this 17-year-old boy into chicken and waffles to open fire and kill this rapper okay so i'm not really sure if this man have turned himself in but i am very happy to report that his killers is off the street and you know when we heard about um uh the other rappers who was killed and we do know that they killers was brought to justice either the lapd have brought them to justice or these people may have felt that society ain't no way safe place to be at knowing that i did something that's upset the community so jail would be my only option okay so 
This is what they charged the teen, the father, and the stepmother with. They, they each was charged with one count of murder and two counts of second degree robbery and one count of cons conspiracy to commit robbery. Okay, they're also saying that the uh, adults are charged with uh, one count of being accessory after the fact of the killing. All right, which I'm not really sure if they really obtained PN, PNB uh, rocks chain his big chain that he had i don't know if they still recovered it but social media hasn't really said anything about that but i do know that uh if anything they will talk to the courts and the courts probably would understand throughout the trial and i really hope they do not take no plea bargain because they have to set an example okay uh p and b rock is not the only one who shot and killed, you know, we have all the other rappers who was killed. Uh, it's just really sad that they are young and they're young and they're doing stuff for the community. They're doing stuff for their peoples. And then you have one person who just ended just like that. So I'm just really happy to report right here, right now, that there has been an arrest three a 17 year old and two adults in the killing of rapper pnb rock in las vegas i'm sorry not los angeles in las vegas okay they arrested um this man in las vegas okay they arrested them in las vegas maybe they thought they could escape and run that's why i say that they need to the, the suspects the suspects uh, probably feel that there's so much going on in society because they own only them though you know it's only you know it's almost like where the the canine is going out into the crime scene and their handler gives them like a piece the clothing the sniff the sniff and the dog just takes off and find them because that same adrenaline smell that the dog can smell to find you is the same feeling you get me the same feeling that the suspect is feeling when they're in society because they got the news on their ass they got uh bloggers they got everybody talking about this story but then they're trying to find out and if they don't know who you are i'm pretty sure everything is just going to set into you but if they do know who you are and they got your face mugshot plastered everywhere then again you're not gonna be able to live with yourself and you're gonna want to go into hiding and your hiding will be uh jail because that's the only place where you'll be able to survive it. Because if somebody sees you and you know your conscience and everything is just gonna get wet. Unless they know what you already look like. I'm just saying. Okay. They said in order to be a criminal, you gotta act like a criminal. You gotta go into the minds of a criminal. So apparently, uh they were caught. So that story right here, right now. And speaking of in the minds of criminals, we're just gonna go scoop right over to the Jeffrey Dahmer story on why Netflix removed the tag under LGBTQIA tag series from Netflix. Okay, so what I'm hearing now, I didn't see the Jeffrey Dahmer. I didn't see it. I've read about that story so many times in school. When I read about, um, I read about that one. I read about the Melendez brothers. You know, I used to be in mock trial. And we actually had to try the case on the Menendez brothers during the mock trial. You guys know a mock trial at school. Uh, that is something that, that was one of our cases, but we didn't really get the chance to uh, do uh, that one. We could have had other killers, big time killers, but we decided to, well, they decided to pick the Melendez brothers. So uh, why did they remove this tag? Now, I'm saying this, I did not see the Netflix series. I, I am going to see it one day, okay? I'm, I'm not gonna see it now, all right? So I do wanna say this, that I, I believe, and I read that they removed the LGBTQIA, which is lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, in question, uh, intersex, and asexual. They removed it because 
Uh, I believe that a lot of people or some of the people who are like uh, watchers, the customers, I think they probably started like calling in and kind of like saying that uh, that that that's probably the reason why. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I know you guys are like, well, why the hell are you giving a story? You got the story on it. Well, I'm just I'm, I'm actually looking forward. Yeah, this is this crazy. I mean, it's Christmas morning. I mean, when it's live, it's live. But when you know, when people cut things out, they just cut things out. It is what it is. I give you the raw and unfiltered right here. Right now. Okay. Um, all right. So yes. So they removed it off of there, which I mean, I don't, I don't really like. For me, I'm just saying. We do know that this man killed people who were of the LGBTQI men. All right, young and of color, and he ate these people. He killed them. And if, if it had not been for that last victim who went in and definitely knew something was up, he escaped, called the cops, and the cops came there. But we know that he went to jail. And we do know that another prisoner killed him in jail. So everybody's asking in social media, First of all, they want to know where is the last victim of this man. And they want to also know, would you say, after what this man has done to these uh, uh, victims, the man who killed them in jail, they say, is he a hero or a psycho? I do know that some, there was a story up here that had talked about whether or not they wanted to um let me see I'm, 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 i apologize guys um, okay well it's not really that important important however oh lord it's not really that important but i'm just saying it's a uh, big, big hit on Netflix. So if you guys want to watch it, go up there on Netflix to go watch the Jeffrey, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. Okay, so moving right along. I'm just getting some information right here, right now. I did give you guys this story before on uh, Tuxel TTV. I am now seeing some information on social media about the disgrace R. Kelly. Now, I am I, I I believe I gave you guys this story before about where uh, R. Kelly, and this was way before his trial that happened in uh, Chicago. This was when it was back in Brooklyn. I gave you the story about, and it's actually an archive. If you guys follow me and you guys see the uh, video, I did bring this story up where uh, R. Kelly had paid off his victims to have a hush-hush because he gave them an STD. And that STD happened to be uh, herpes, herpes simplex 2, which is the uh, the uh, sexual kind. Then you have the herpes simplex 1, where people get cold sores, you know, they advertise on television, cold sores, whatever. But breaking news. So we already know that R. Kelly, the disgrace R. Kelly, and I, he wasn't even on a docket either. On a docket, look at me, on a docket. Okay, he, he wasn't even on our itinerary, the manifest. Okay, there we go. He wasn't on the manifest. There's my word. Okay, he wasn't even on the manifest. Uh, basically, um, breaking news R. Kelly ordered to pay restitution of 300k, 300K to herpes victims. Now, listen to me, guys. Do R. Kelly even have, do the disgrace R. Kelly even have money? I mean, the last that I checked, he was in a whole negative millions. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this story up and see what it's all about. Okay, so according to social media, they're saying that a federal judge has ordered disgrace, and that, that, that's not that's just coming from me, bitch. The disgrace judge has ordered singer R. Kelly. Is he even a singer? Well, we should add formal singer, okay? Because he's not even doing shit right now. I think his contract has come to a halt. It's over, I think. I'm not really sure, but listen. Let's go ahead and reword that again. A federal judge has ordered the disgrace 
former singer R. Kelly to pay more than 300K to two of his victims. Now, I believe those are the same two victims that I uh, discussed when uh, when they had brought him up on these allegations way back when it was now planning his obstruction case and getting all these trials set because it had to stop because of the pandemic. But here they're saying that the judge has ordered the amount to cover the course of treatment for the herpes and the psychotherapy that these women has gone under. Lord help us all. See, this is why we tell individuals that the only sex that should be happening, well, it should be, uh, it, what's the word? The only sex should be abstinence, okay? But when you do engage in sex, we would encourage you to protect yourself no matter what you're doing. Eating ass, use a uh, denim dam, okay? When you suck a dick, you use a condom, okay? When you eat a pussy, you use a denim dam, the same as you eat a booty, okay? And when you kissing, um, I don't think they got a cover for that, but you can use a denim dam. I don't know. They used to have these things where you, you could just stretch and kiss people, okay? But I'm just saying, bitch, if you would have protected yourself, then we wouldn't have been in this situation because if he had herpes then and he wouldn't have given it to you because you would have been protected, bitch. But I'm just saying, okay? 300K is what he must pay to these individuals for their treatment and their psychotherapy. Now, here, they say that these women had sex intercourse with Kelly and not knowing he had herpes. And then Kelly, he basically didn't even tell them because he probably didn't know he had herpes. And then, mind you, let's go a little bit further, you know, when we seen that sex tape and then he was having sex with these kids and he wasn't using protection on them. And then we, I, I'm just saying, because you cannot cure herpes. Herpes is not curable. It is treatable. It is not curable. You will be on, if you want to treat it, you will be on medicine for the remaining of your life. But I'm just saying, okay, I'm just saying that if this man had it for them, then that means all the people he had prior to giving them the uh, STD, they got herpes, unless they protected themselves. And I don't think after we heard the testimony in the courtroom, okay, about that young girl who we now know her name, and she identified herself as being that young girl in that video, that infamous video, that was played back almost 20 years ago. And she said on the stand that she had sex with R. Kelly, the disgraced R. Kelly, more than over 100 times. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't protected because we do know in the video there was no protection used because we've seen the video. And I'm pretty sure that all the other videos that he recorded prior to them or prior to th that video, who knows? But I can tell you that if it's any videos, the videos will be turned in to the hands of the prosecutor so they can either try this case or, but we do know that he was just found guilty in June and was sentenced uh, to 30 years, okay? And we also know that he was sentenced another 30 years and the racketeering charges and sex trafficking charge in New York. So, bitch, that's 60 years. Okay, so far. Okay, no more than 60 years. Then he has two more other cases, which one is in Chicago and the other one is in, I believe, and let's see, I would say Minnesota. I would believe, I believe is in Minnesota. But I do know that he has two more other uh, charges pending. So whatever those uh, uh, consequences is, is going to probably add on, run concurrent, non concurrent. I don't know how it is, but I'm going to tell you, like I said, then I'll say it again. I don't think R. Kelly is going to ever see the light of day uh, again. I don't think so. Thank you.
Okay, so welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Right here, right now, I do want to talk about uh, suspects caught in Bishop Midsermon robbery that was caught on live broadcast. Okay, so when I brought you guys this story then in archives, uh, I want to basically go ahead and, I guess, reiterate, recorrect, however you want to call it. Uh, I did say that... Um, he may this may have been a setup and that these people come in and everything was staged and uh definitely definitely these guys because i it was just really kind of like crazy to know that a church and you know when you see it it's like okay when you see these mega churches it's like these mega churches you would see the pastors who have the rolls royce and the big houses but i just didn't understand how his sanctuary was so small and he just drive these big luxury cars and the big house and you know he was in uh you know i brought the story allegedly that a lady had gave him all her life savings and this man basically allegedly wanted to use it for uh running for brooklyn uh for a president running run for every other thing use it for every other thing but she wanted uh this money allegedly was supposed to be invested and he was supposed to or promised her money back and return more than she could ever imagine. However, that's not the case. Allegedly, the social media, uh, the agreement was that she would get paid $100 a month, which I was like, bitch, absolutely not. I think this is over 80 something thousand dollars that she had given him. And then unfortunately uh she wasn't even getting the 100 dollars a month i was saying bitch, she should need to get 100 dollars a week bitch, 100 dollars a day okay so she took him to court i believe that's up in litigation uh i don't think anything um come back from that but if it does i'll give you information on it but the bishop was in the news yet again and this time this is when two people came into his church and it's all caught on camera. Everything is caught on camera. Two people came, two females came into his church and they sat in the back of the church. And then uh, according to social media, according to the bishop, according to what we've seen on social media, part of his story and what we seen on social media, the females was yelling and they were, from what I've seen, they walked up to the front of the church. They walked past him, which happens to be past the camera. You see my hand? Past the camera. Exactly. Walk right past the camera. And as soon as that lady walked right past the camera, you can see the bishop who calls himself a child of God, who's supposed to be a man of the cloth, okay, runs up to this lady and grabs her. Oh, my God. It's caught on camera, ladies and gentlemen. If I could find the link, I'll put it in the description below. Uh, caught, caught, grabbed her right on camera like he was the cops. Like he grabbed her, like roughed her. And I mean, she wasn't doing nothing. She didn't go towards him. She was walked right past the camera. Okay. And he's over there on the podium. And he just was very, very, and you can see it in his face. That was not the pastor. That was not the bishop. That was not the man of the cloth. And that is the reason why I don't go to church anymore. Okay? Because of that. Not the robbing, 
and people coming into church doing that is the people in the church and that's a whole different topic okay but that's one of my reasons why i don't go to church i have church in my heart i have church here i have church knowing that that's like i said it all the time. okay so he grabbed this lady and like roughed her and you can hear it in the video on what is being said audio but when you read about what he allegedly said, he said that what we seen was he was what she was coming towards him and she was shouting. And then right what we didn't see in the camera, which I don't believe. OK, um, he said that she uh, was going directly into the path, allegedly into his wife and kid's face, which I clearly see from the video, which they say pictures and videos is a thousand words and opinions from what people watch it. I seen the video, clearly it didn't seem nothing like that. It seemed like she was open. It don't seem like anybody was in that space. And boom, he just went right after her. Then we now hear, or this, okay, let me, oh, go back on this. Okay, so they did, um, okay, what he said was, he said that he felt danger for his life, danger for his kids, danger for his wife and that he thought that since he experienced the robbery of these people who came right off the street into his um church uh these ladies came in at the end of the allegedly came in at the end of the service sat in the back of the church he thought it was suspicious and when that happened the ladies start yelling and shouting and screaming and stuff or whatever allegedly and then all that other stuff took place so now the bishop is back in social media news yet again. And we have the story here where they're saying that authorities have busted two suspects uh, for the wild uh, court on camera arm held up robbery of what they call the blinged out bishop, okay, during his sermon, which was caught on social media about two months ago, okay? They are now saying that the fugitive, so now this actually uh, um, recorrect my story when I said that uh, probably insurance claim, but you never know. I mean, I'm a citizen journalist. It, I, I didn't go off of anybody else's um, story. I actually, like I said, it's the opinions of the Omega Studio News, Talk Show Tea, Cream in the Morning, right here, right now. So what I do, you don't do, okay? You do something else. What I do, work for me and what I say is only going to bite me in the ass. So I'll just have to like correct myself. So I'm putting this out there in archives. So again, uh, correction. So fugitive defendants, both 23 was arrested in Brooklyn at their homes and now they face federal robbery charges for pulling guns on the bishop and his wife and their children, uh, which you can definitely, definitely see on uh, social media because it was uh, broadcast. Okay, so and you know, I didn't really notice this, but I was actually just reading this. And when I actually typed in his name, this is what I read, and I seen this, and I was like, Oh my god, I'm gagging about this. So I want to put this on social media archives. You guys can go up on social media and see this. But it says that Lamar Miller Whitehead is a religious and community leader in Brooklyn, New York. Whitehead, a convicted felon, is known for his close relationship with New York City Mayor Eric Adams and the uh uh and and also known for displaying his wealth okay but I didn't know he was a felon I didn't really know he was a felon I didn't I honestly didn't know that um I didn't know that so technically if those people went if it was real and they came in he couldn't really defend himself if he had a gun because Technically, felons or convicted felons cannot have in possession of a handgun. So it's not like he could have, uh, you know, defended himself. But my thing is this. If you got Rolls Royce sitting outside and you have a mansion and you have all these bling, 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 where's your security, damn it? Why do you not have security at the door? Why do you not have security outside? I'll be protected. That's why I was saying that that's what led me to for the conclusion that this was like an assurance uh, scam because... I'm like, a church? Because if you look at the storefront outside, it does not look like a church. I promise you it don't, okay? Uh, it has, like, the cover thing down. It has the on. It does not look like a church. I promise you it don't. And 
when you go inside that church, it's just, it does not, according to the camera, it doesn't look like a mega church. And I'm not saying like mega church should always have, you know, but it's just what we've seen. It's the stereotype of what we've seen where we see mega churches. We see mega churches, we see nice cars, we see, you know, the luxury cars, we see everything, the helicopters, the homes, the staff, whatever. But I'm just saying, that's what led me to uh, believe that it was a little fishy. But now, according to social media, it's, it wasn't fishy. And apparently, uh, the suspects identified, we're not going to say their names here, uh, who made off with a million dollars in jewelry from the bishop and his spouse who um, who was holding their daughter. So that was kind of like tormenting for the, um, the young girl. Okay, so we do know that. So, yeah, I mean, listen, ladies and gentlemen, look, when you go out in public in New York, try not to flash all your jewelry and try not to be blinged out in an area which you know that if you go into or if you know that New York, New York, just for its history, just don't do it. Okay, because when you do that, you're going to bring so much attention to yourself and you bring so much attention to yourself. That's when you're going to have these catastrophic problems. And if you want to avoid it, just don't do it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to uh, go ahead and end it off with this uh, breaking news. Yeah, so even if I do find a link, I'm going to probably put it down in the description below. But I do want to let, let you guys, I'm not going to show it right here, up here, because I do know that there is a cover form. And I want you guys to press on it to indicate whether or not you choose to like the video or not like the video. But again, viewer discretion is strongly advised when you see this link about but, and, and it's all social media. I guess we're social media junkies. We actually watch these things only to be aware about our surroundings and what really are what people are really capable of doing. Okay, this EMT lieutenant just left her station house to go to the corner store, and when she was there in this video, you can see this man push this lady this 61 year old lady down to the ground got on top of her and started slicing and dicing in her chest just multiple times and it's so crazy he it doesn't look like you know um he gets up and oh my god her body was lifeless on the ground um he then ran back. I think he was charging after somebody else. And then somebody came up to come see if this lady was okay. But in the end, a 61-year-old lieutenant of EMS in New York was dead. And they did catch this man. This man was so fucking stupid, okay? You know, he didn't decide to stab himself to take his own fucking life. He decided to go into his home and barricade himself in his home and cops had to go there to get his ass out after a couple of hours and they got him out they got him out and he took him into custody but right now they're saying that he haven't had well charges haven't is pending right now however uh they're like seeing if he's going to get like a psychiatric evaluation but my thing is this ladies and gentlemen why are we still blaming everything on mental health i mean Kareem, nowadays people have mental health and you don't even see the signs. Now, when you see this man, and from what witnesses are saying that uh, that they seen this man on the street, this man was quiet, he ain't talked to nobody, he was always by himself, and he just had this way 
of, you know, just being a average citizen person, you know, not causing harm to anybody. And then now he just snaps like that and go on a, a, a killing and kill someone high official in New York who happens to be a lieutenant of the fire department. You understand? But my thing is this, ladies and gentlemen, the only reason why I, 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 I say look at this video and I don't know if you want to, you don't have to, it's all up to you. But I'm just saying, ladies and gentlemen, it's your surroundings, okay? You have to be visual. You have to be alert when you go out into society to see all corners, okay? Front, left, back, provisional side, left, right. You need to see all corners, bitch, and you need to be on your guard, Okay, I don't care if it's a little boy. I don't care if it's a little girl behind you or a little boy or or a, a homeless person or a sweet old granny. You have to be visual of your alert and your surroundings. It was nothing this lady could do. And then she was so small, like she was short, small. It's not even she could fight this man or she can push him back. It's like she just, good God almighty. Ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to bring that information to you guys right here, right now, because I just feel that no matter what you do in society, you should always look out for yourself. Look out for yourself. Always protect yourself. Be visual. I'm not saying go carry a knife, carry a gun, like defense-wise. I'm just saying just be visual of who's around you. Subway, bus car lane, carpool, store, outside, in McDonald's or a restaurant or wherever, wherever you are, just be safe and always watch your back. Okay, guys, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Kareem Clements. This has been another episode of Kareem is One. I hope you guys enjoyed it. These stories, what I'm going to do is, because I did not forget about the update for Tosho T. YouTube, Omega City News, Social TV, and the programs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, post the video on the Facebook Kareem Clemens YouTube Gaming and update you guys on the YouTube Gaming for Omega Studio News and Social T. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode. I'm Kareem Clemens, and I'll see you guys in the next video. For more information, you guys can visit the blog page. Have a good one. Bye.